this lecture, we talk about the trace operator and how this tool is used to calculate the expectation value of a physical property. So we have the cats and the bras, and with cat A and, and the bra B, we could form this uh, cat bra, which is an operator. Uh, all operators are made of such cat bras. And then we also have the bracket that we get from the bra B and the cat A. So the cat, the cat A and the bra B multiplied this way, the cat A and the bra B multiplied this way. There's two different ways of multiplying a cat and a bra. And now they are related by an operation that we call the trace. So if I take the trace of the cat bra, I get the bracket. So here we have an operator. So that's a a cat bra, and over here we have a complex number. That's the corresponding bracket. And since these brackets are linear in both the cat and the bra, I can uh, write the cat as a, as a sum of other cats, and I can write the, the bra as a sum of other bras. There is a corresponding linear structure for the trace. So if I have the trace of, say, one operator A and another operator B, and they are multiplied by complex numbers or by beta, then that's just equal to alpha times the trace of the operator A and beta times the trace of the operator B. <coughs> so in particular, if I have many cat bras of this kind, say I have A's labeled, A cats labeled by K and B cats labeled by, by K also, and some numbers, say gamma K in between, and I sum over these K's, then this would be some operator, say O, and I take the trace of this operator O, then that's just the sum over K. Here's the gamma K. So this is like these numbers alpha that come out here. And then for each of these kit bras, I get the, the corresponding bracket of BK and AK. So the trace, the trace that we have introduced here is linear in, that, in this sense. And then there's another property of the trace, namely that it is cyclic. And that means that if I have the trace of O operators, say O1 and O2, then it doesn't matter in which order they are multiplied. I can have the product O1, O2 take the trace, or the product O2, O1 take the trace. It gives me the same number. Although this product of O1 and O2 and the product of O2 and O1 these products can be very different operators, but they have the same trace. And all we need to check for that is that for the prototype operators, this is correct, because then the linearity of the trace does the rest for us. So let's just check this for, for two prototype operators. So let's take something like an A1 and a B1 for, for the first <coughs> operator, and an A2, B2 kit bra for the second operator. And so on. let's work this out. So first of all, as it stands, there is the, the bracket of B1 and A2, which is sort of this number in the middle and that comes out of the trace all by itself. And then we are left with the kit bra made of A1 and B2. And that gives us the B2 A1 bracket. But now we can write this cat bra as the trace of A2 and B1. And we still have this number B2, A1 bracket multiplying the trace, but then because of the linearity, this can be taken inside, after which we have 
the A to cat, the B to A1, B1, bar, and here the number B to A1. But that's of course the trace of, and now I read this as the tip bar of A1 and B2, and this as the tip bar of A1 and B1. And yes, that's the different order of the factors under the trace that we had before. So this cyclic property of the trace is demonstrated because we can demonstrate it for these building blocks of all operators and then together with the linearity. It's true for all operators. All right, so let's put this uh, concept of the trace into use. For that, I will just quickly imagine an apparatus where we have a quantum system arriving and then it is probed and there are outcomes one, two, all the way to n. And then if we would block one of the, uh, if we would block all of these outcomes except for one and continue, we would then, the system thus prepared, described by the cat A1, A2, uh, all the way to An if we use uh, uh, this measurement for a preparation. And this, this would constitute a basis. Now, if the system is described by the generic cat, then we know that this generic cat is the sum over all the basis cats from 1 to n, a, k, and here we have the bracket of a, k and the generic cat. And when we square those numbers, the a, k is these brackets, we square them, so that's the probability of observing the kth outcome. For the next uh, quantum system prepared like this that is going through the measurement apparatus. Now, if this is a measurement of property, a measurement of property A, then we can assign numbers, values of the property, just like we did it when we talked about polarization and we introduced these Pauli operators that we called x and y and z and we had values assigned of plus minus one. But more generally, we can assign values alpha one, alpha two, all the way to alpha n. And then the mean value of what is observed is obtained by multiplying these prob probabilities for, for the kth outcome with the values that we get. So the mean value for the property A that we get after measuring many systems equally prepared and measured by the same apparatus, the mean value, very often called the expectation value of A, so that will be the sum over all possible outcomes, k from 1 to n, the value associated with the kth outcome, times the probability that the kth outcome is observed. Now this probability, the square of this cat bra, is this cat bra multiplied by its complex conjugate. So here is the cat bra, and here is the complex conjugate, where we interchange the roles of the cat and the bra. Now, these are all complex numbers, so it doesn't matter in which order I multiply them. So let me just take another order where what is the last term now is the first term. And in this arrangement, we see that what refers to the state is the bra on the left, the kit on the right, and everything in between refers to the property A its values and the kits and bras of the of uh, the basis kits that go with this property A. So we can separate these things and have 
the state bra on the left and then the sum over all the ingredients that refer to the property A, the cat AK, the value alpha K, the bra AK, and then finally the state cat. So this sum here is just a mathematical symbol for property A. So let me just use the letter A for it. So it's an operator that describes the physical property A. And so we have the state bra, the operator A for the property A, and the state cat. But now we can read this as a bra multiplying a cat, as a bra cat, where we have the state bra and the cat that we obtain by applying the operator to the state cat. But that's just the basic structure that we have in the trace. So this is the trace of the cat A times state cat and the state bra. And so now we have in this trace one factor that refers to the property and another factor that refers to the state of the system. The cat bra that we get from the state cat and the state bra. So let's now think a little bit more carefully about how this experiment is done. So the, the system arrives prepared in a particular state so it's fed into the apparatus from a perforation device. So this perforation device prepares the system in a particular state. Let's call this the state S. So we have the cat labeled by S. And then this cat and its bra appear for the state of the system in this trace. And for the apparatus, we have the operator that is made up from the cats and the brass that describe the system with particular properties and the alphas, the values that we assign to the property for the different outcomes. Now, this is just this kind of the ideal situation when we have full control and we know exactly what the system is prepared in. But there could be more complicated situations. So for example, there could be a lottery inside the apparatus and this lottery draws from a supply of states S1, S2 and so forth, Sj, with different probabilities. Namely S1 with the probability G1, S2 with the probability P2, and so forth, and Sj with the probability Pj. And of course, these probabilities, they all add up to unity. So the next state that comes could be of the type S1, could be of the type S2, could be of the type Sj, and, and the various Probabilities are realized with these probabilities P1, P2, all the way to Pj. So now this is no longer good enough for the description because we have to take this lottery into account. Now, if the state arriving is Sj, then everything is as before. So there are certain probabilities associated with this particular uh, system state, and then we get an expectation value for this j kind of uh, system state, and that's just given by the trace of the property A operator and the system cat bra for the j state that is sent into the measurement apparatus. But for the next system, well, it could be S1 or S2, could be any of those, and they occur with these probabilities. So the overall expectation value of A will be the corresponding sum that takes into account all the probabilities S1, S2, all the way to Sj. So for the J1, we have the expectation value Aj, and we have the probability Pj. 
So this is now the overall expectation value for this kind of experiment. Now, this expectation value is this trace, and the trace is linear. So rather than calculating these traces, multiplying them with pj and then summing, we can sum first and take the trace later. Then we have the trace of a, and here we have the sum over j from 1 to j, system cat, probability for this j case, system bra. And so now we have, for the whole thing, we have the trace of a, well that still refers to the, to the property, but for the system, for the system state, we now have an operator row, which is just this sum, and that describes the state of the system. That's the state operator for the system. And this is what we call the statistical operator. So, the expectation value of A in this more general setting is the trace of a product of two things. One operator that refers to the property that we are measuring. Second operator refers to how the system is prepared. So now in this more general situation, we have this preparation where we think that there is such a lottery going on. Anyway, whatever is going on, what comes out, the system is described by a statistical operator. And so this system is fed into the measurement apparatus. And we get probabilities and we calculate the expectation value of, uh, of, of the property A according to this rule with the trace, where we have these two factors, one for the property, one for the preparation of the system. So this brings us to the question, what are now the probabilities that we get outcome 1, outcome 2, outcome n? Well, for a particular sj, the probability was sj times a k for the kth outcome. But now, this sj occurs with the probability pj. So we should multiply this by pj and sum over j and then this will be the probability for the k outcome in this measurement. And again, we can rearrange terms and write this as a k and then the sum over j from 1 to j. Here we have sj, pj, sj, and then we have the a k cat. And so we recognize the statistical operator row here that describes the preparation by the system. And the whole expression is the a k bra, the statistical operator row, the a k cat. But this in turn is the trace of the a k cat bra times the statistical operator row. So it is another trace of this structure where we have one term that refers to the apparatus and one term that refers to the state of the system. But now this is just a probability operator that goes with the apparatus. So we have the trace of the k probability operator and the state of the system. So here I'm just introducing this k probability operator. Which is just this cat bra that we have here. And so we arrive at a modification of what we had earlier for calculating probabilities. Earlier we were just talking about system prepared, say, in an eigenstate of, uh, of a system, like a system state, and then we had the probability, uh, probability for the case outcome given by this expression. But now we have uh, something more general. So rather than having the sandwich of S, the probability operator K, 
and s, we now have this trace where we no longer have just a simple s, s, cat bra for the system, but the whole statistical operator. So this is now a modification of what we had earlier. We called earlier we called this the Born rule. Now we have this generalized version of the Born rule. for the probability of the k outcome. And this sets the stage for the discussion of the next lecture, where we will study the properties of statistical operators, and then in particular, look at statistical operators for qubits. In summary, we learned that the expectation value of a physical property is the trace of a product of two operators, one for the physical property, the other for the state of the system. In the next lecture, we discuss the properties of general state operators.